Uganda wakes up today seeing the LGBT flag being flown at the U.S. Embassy. Yes, people are shocked in Uganda Kampala today. Some of them are happy, I would suggest, those who are LGBT community. But for most, very shocked to see today LGBT pride flag at the U.S. Embassy. This is very intriguing, Flairs. So in Uganda, men and men relationships are prohibited. Women and women relationships are prohibited. You're not allowed to have such partners because they believe it's their tradition. They voted into law a few days ago, a law that completely prohibits men and men promotion, women and women, the LGBT program as it is, because that's their culture. That's their country. That's their choice. That's what they've done in Parliament. Now, the USA today, through its embassy in Kampala, has flown high the LGBT flag. What does that mean? Is that a sign of defiance? How do you perceive that? Put it into context. This is your house. You're having a party in your house. You say, everybody come dressed black on black. Whatever black you have, bring it. Then somebody comes dressed in white. How do you perceive this? A few months back, between the USA and the West in general against the Ugandan government through its president, they were going at it about the LGBT laws and stuff like that. Uganda in general, through its president, does not accept LGBT system. Relationship or marriage are prohibited. You will go to jail in Uganda for promoting LGBT. If you violently grab some children and you rape them and so on, we kill you. Uh-huh. And that one I totally support and I will support. You'll go to jail in Uganda, according to the law, if you are HIV positive and having sexual interaction with another person who doesn't necessarily know that you're HIV positive. That is the law. Let me just remind you, fellas. A while back, Kamala Harris and many other U.S. representatives came through Africa in different countries. They went to Ghana asking Ghanaians to accept the LGBT marriages, the LGBT community within the Ghanaian society, even though the president was a very soft with it, but many people in parliament was very much against it. They did not like it. We need to legislate. Our friends just passed their law in Uganda. We may not go the way they have gone because our constitution is very clear as to the direction we should move. And so we'll be guided by that. Because if we pass any law against the constitution, it's unconstitutional. So we have to do that. And so what are you afraid of? The same for Zimbabwe. A few weeks back, if you remember, a BBC journalist went to Zimbabwe to have an interview with President Bunagagwa, asking him if he's going to promise, will you promise me if, that you're going to vote in the LGBT program? And the President Bunagagwa very clearly said to him, you know what, we have many other issues in our country. I don't have to promise you anything. Can you promise me today that you will do that? I'm a constitutionalist. The current provision in the constitution forbids same-sex marriages and uphold that until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current constitution, it is banned. Are you going to lead a campaign? No, I will not lead a campaign. Why not? Those people who want that are the people who must uh, canvass for such things so that If they are able to win majority in amending the constitution, they would amend it. But it's not my duty on that uh, issue to say I want to campaign for this. No. This is our country. If the LGBT program has to be voted, then they need to win the elections and get the program vote through parliament. The same for Kenya with the president Ruto, who was asked very similar questions by a CNN anchor. Are you going to support the LGBTQ program? And President Ruto said, We have our tradition. We have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue as you would want to put it. We have much urgent situation to take care of. Kenya has more problems to look after right now. Kenyan people have difficulties accessing service, not enough hospitals, not enough service delivery. The LGBT program is not a priority for us. Kenyans need to earn more money. They need to get jobs. They need to better their lives. They need to get better position, better situation. Same for Uganda, where they had a back on back between the president and the people from foreign countries. If you vote into law, the newest law against LGBT, we're going to cut AIDS from you. Of course, the USA sends AIDS to Uganda. It's a lot of money about hundreds of millions of dollars come to Uganda specifically for people living with HIV. So my question is, if you truly want to aid people living 
with HIV. Why does that depend with the stance of the government? It's not the government that's going to suffer if you do not pay that money. It's the people that you're supposed to help that are going to suffer. Now, who are you punishing? The government or the people living with the HIV? President Yuri Museveni was very strong with his stance, say absolutely not. Respect African societies and their values. If you don't agree, you just keep quiet. Let's manage our society the way we see. You are not mixing your culture with our culture. You need to respect people wherever you go. You need to respect their tradition, their way of life. If they choose not to accept anything, who are you to come and tell us how to live? As a result, the president of parliament in Uganda's visa was revoked. Yes, the aids that was supposed to come from the USA to Uganda to help people living with HIV was stopped. As a reaction, the president of Uganda took a flight to Russia, saying, I'm just going to Russia, just go say hi. Obviously, because Russia doesn't mingle in our internal businesses. I'm just going to say hi. I went to Russia uninvited. And I believe whoever who is in trouble with Russia will not necessarily lack it. Now, this morning in Kampala, the embassy of the United States has decided to fly very high the LGBT flag. I mean, this is somebody else's house. I understand embassy has policies, uh, humanities and stuff like that. Let's say the embassy of the United States in whichever country is considered as a land of the United States of America. But this is Uganda. This is not a flag you're flying in the building, but you're flying the flag very high for everybody to see. Is that okay to do? I mean, let me give you an example. Some people can say the United States is trying to support the LGBT community. The question arises here is this one. Why doesn't the United States of America fly the LGBTQ flag in their embassy in Saudi Arabia? Why did not do it in Qatar? Why did not do it in any of those countries? But it's very easy to do it in Uganda because of interest. Saudi Arabia plays a very big role in the economy of the United States. You don't want to mess that up. They are a powerful country. So it's very easy to push Uganda around. That's what many people would think because Uganda is a small country, not necessarily powerful. Now, doesn't that sound like bullying in some ways? If you think about it. Okay, I am stronger than you. I'm going to wear white in your party. Even though everybody's dressed in black, what are you going to do about it? How do you justify that? Is it okay, even if your cause is right, to come into other people's land and say, you know what, you do things on the left, I'm going to do it on the right. And I don't give a continental how you feel about it because I'm stronger than you. Is this a way to make the Ugandans react so they can very quickly perhaps bring them democracy because there seem to be no democracy in Uganda as per the Western standard? Because we know how it goes. Isn't democracy also about respect, going to people's house and respect the way of life? Like I said earlier, when you go to Denmark, some people leave their shoes in front of the door before they walk into the door. Yes, they walk into the house barefoot. If you go to Uganda, they do the same. If you go to Japan, they greet in a certain way with respect. They don't shake hands. If you go to India, they do namaste as a way of respect and salutation and greeting each other. You don't do things your own way. Shouldn't you do the same thing when you go to other people's house? Or would you just go to Saudi Arabia and try to touch a woman and say, this is how we do in Western countries? I don't care if you're somebody's wife. This is how I think. Let me know how you feel, fellas. Once again, William Ruto, Uru Kenyatta, Edison Munongwangwa of Zimbabwe, President Museveni of Uganda have all been faced with journalists asking them to support LGBTQ. And in general, as we know, in Africa, in most countries at least, the LGBT community is not necessarily accepted. In Africa, some people, some cultures choose to be polygamous. Yeah, polygamy is when people choose to have different, many spouses. Okay, it's not uh, cheating. Not all polygamous marriages are bad, people will say. And not all monogamy are necessarily good. There are many couples that are faithful to each other, so it's a man and a woman, but they live in a very toxic relationship, very toxic situation. There are indeed many marriages where there's one husband and many wives that have a beautiful history. Is it okay for Africans to go to Europe and the USA and say, you know what, I want to live as a polygamous man? No, it won't be accepted. You will be arrested. It is criminalized in America. You can't be polygamous. You can't have many wives, more than one wife. If Western countries will not accept polygamous marriages, why should Africans accept Western ideas when they are not necessarily accepted naturally in Africa? So shouldn't we respect each other's way of life? If you go to a place and they live in a certain way, respect their way, Perhaps bring your advice if you feel like they're doing things in a way that are not appropriate. There are avenues and ways to try to convey those ideas rather than be forceful and defiant in this level. In Uganda, you're not allowed to take pictures in front of the U.S. Embassy. You cannot do that. There are police, there are security agents that will probably kick you out or, you know, throw you away or something very similar. In South Africa, in contrast, which is a very strong country, very respected country, not to say that Uganda is not respected, very strong country economically, you're allowed to take pictures wherever you want because that's the law. I mean, nobody can stop you. This is South Africa. 
you can take a picture wherever you want. And I feel like the more you present yourself as an accepting in many things that are imposed to you or many things that are asked to you from a stronger figure, stronger nation or stronger platform, the more they tend to push the button. Everybody, including LGBTQ people, need to be protected. Nobody should hit or hurt anybody for their sexual orientation. But the bottom line remains, shouldn't we respect the law in the way that it is? Shouldn't we respect the law in the way that it is presented by government? God bless.